In this lesson, we're going to explore how Virtual Crash 3 simulates an object undergoing constant uniform deceleration. In this case, we're going to simulate the motion of a simple cylinder-shaped object. Here we have our cylinder. And right now, it's just a geometrical object that can't participate in physics simulations. In order to get it to participate in the Virtual Crash System's physics simulation, we have to go to the physics menu and make the rigid body, make it a rigid body from selection. So now our cylinder has the various properties needed for it to participate in physics simulations, such as coefficient of friction, restitution, and uh, velocity, inertial, inertial properties such as mass, moments of inertia, and so forth. For now, we're just, we're just going to change the initial speed of our cylinder to 50 miles per hour. And we see it undergoing motion along the x-axis. Let's go ahead and reposition it to x equals 0, y equals 0. And we can look at its contact force properties. Uh, and here we see an option for friction ground, which is equal to 0 0.5. That's just a coefficient of friction, obviously, between the cylinder and the ground. And the higher that value is for a given initial speed, the shorter the distance you would expect it to go until it finally stops. And that's, of course, what we see here. And of course, the virtual crash system updates the simulation in real time as the input parameters to the simulator are updated. So let's change that to 0 0.5. And we can go down here and have a look at the uh, motion of the puck shaped object. Not too terribly surprising. Now let's take a look at its data. Of course, the, the Virtual Crash system has a couple of ways of getting access to the data. One of them is to use this diagram window tool. And that'll show you your object's various dynamical properties as a function of time, such as velocity, distance traveled, acceleration, and so forth. But we're not going to use that for our study here. Instead, what we're going to use is our log file output. And that's under Tools. You could see a tab for Report Dynamics. And you can report your data at any um, interval at which, in which you'd like the data to be reported. I'm just going to keep it here at a uh, tenth of a second per output. And you just simply press the Create button, and it'll generate the report for you. So here we see the output, and the log file contains uh, data on the velocity, um, the velocity vectors, angle, the heading of the object, and the CG position as a function of time, as you would expect. And we can just copy, we could just simply copy and paste that data into a spreadsheet tool for analysis. So here we have a spreadsheet and we'll just copy and paste that data in. We can see how nicely it pastes right in there. And let's let's uh, let's do a quick little analysis of our data. So let's first make a graph of the distance the cylinder travels as a function of time. And we have that here. And I want to make another column showing the velocity in feet per second. So let's just go ahead and make that conversion here. And I want to plot that velocity in feet per second as a function of time. And we'll graph that. And of course, the object's velocity is on the y-axis in this graph, and time is on the x-axis, and you can see it running from 0 to 6 seconds. 
I would like to focus on the portion of the curve and what during the time in which the uh, object is still in motion. Okay. So here again we have the object's velocity as a function of time while it's still in motion. Let me just trim off that last point. And I want to make a linear regression fit. So here we have our regression showing us the velocity in feet per second as a function of time. Of course we know that our object is decelerating. Let me get my paintbrush tool here. We know our object is decelerating at a rate equal to the negative of the coefficient of friction times the acceleration of gravity. So if we can draw a free body diagram, we have our normal force pointing along the z-axis. And let's suppose this is the x-axis. And we have just a simple frictional force pointing backward. Our object has an initial speed going along the positive x-axis. And of course, the weight of the object is pointing along the negative z-axis. So the only force on the x-axis that's acting on our object is friction. And that, of course, is equal to the normal force times the coefficient of friction, which is just mass times gravity times the coefficient of friction. And that, according to Newton's second law, is equal to mass times acceleration. Again, we're just treating this as a one-dimensional case where object is in motion along the x-axis only. And for you astute observers, you would have noticed that I forgot to put a negative sign here since the frictional force is pointing along the negative x-axis direction. So the acceleration on our object is simply equal to minus mu times g. And of course, if we look at the velocity of our object as a function of time, we know it starts at our initial speed that we gave it. And with each time step, we should expect to see it at a lower speed. Where the velocity as a function of time is equal to that initial speed plus our constant acceleration times time. So if we do a linear regression, our slope should simply equal to a. So if we go to our result, we see that we have a slope e equal to negative 16.087. And if we divide that by g, 32.174, we find that a is equal to negative 0.5 g's just as we would expect. Now let's look at our distance as a function of time. Again, I want to focus on the portion of the curve in which the object is still undergoing motion.
And this time we'll do a second order polynomial fit. Here's our equation. On the y-axis we have the position of our object and on the x-axis we have time. What would we expect to see? Well, again we know for an object undergoing uniform acceleration we expect a position to be equal to the initial position plus the initial velocity times time plus one half the acceleration times time squared. In this simulation, the initial position is equal to zero. And our acceleration, of course, is simply negative mu g. So if we do a fit to our data, which should look something like this, Our quadratic coefficient should be equal to negative one half u g. From our regression fit, it's equal to negative eight point oh four three five, which means mu is equal to. Sixteen point zero eight seven over G, which is equal to zero point five, just as we expected. So our analysis shows that our virtual crash uh, simulation system is behaving just as we would expect given this object which is undergoing uniform deceleration. Thanks for watching.